I love days like today, days when many different themes come together, theologically and liturgically. This, of course, is our Harvest Thanksgiving. It is also, of course, the Feast of Christ the King and a Baptism Day. So three wonderful celebrations all in one. And God is all about bringing things together. We heard this in our colic today. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. The kingly part of today's service is that we recognize at this crowning of the year, the very last Sunday of the church year before Advent begins and the new church year starts, it's that we focus on the kingship of Christ, enthroned in glory in heaven, the king of glory. Indeed, we will hear that wonderful poem by George Herbert set to music later in this service. King of glory, king of peace, I will love you. Of course, as a general man, it is a song, a poem that is dear to my heart, of course, set to a different tune called General Seminary, which you can find in your hymnal. And uh, we consider that to be our our alma mater. But this kingship of Christ and this crowning of the year are glorious. And they lead us, of course, to be thankful for the reason that Christ is glorified on his throne in the first place. Now, it probably won't surprise you to learn that Pete and I have been binge watching The Crown. It is required viewing for all Episcopal clergy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, we're up to the part where we're in the late 90s and the divorce is happening. Windsor Castle burned. The Britannia, the beloved royal yacht, is decommissioned. And the world seems to be falling apart around, around the queen and the family. And... To add insult to injury, there's this sort of Republican movement where uh, people are having television shows, literally voting on TV to ditch the monarchy and go for a republic. Well, this brings her very low and the family very low. And one of the things, one of the themes that keeps coming up is value for money. People have an idea that the cost of the monarchy far outweighs the benefits. People ask, what do you do anyway? Now in the show, we, we see, you know, we, we hear uh, accounts of these very packed daily diaries of appearances here and openings of this and cuttings of that and all the other stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But this value for money, it must have made uh, her feel disappointed at least perhaps uh, disillusioned. But we are here giving thanks for our king, Jesus, the king of kings and the lord of lords. And there's no value for money there, is there? Because the thing that he gave, gives and gave is beyond all price, beyond all the treasures of the world. And we will have the strain of that bit of theology in our baptismal hymn, which is a new hymn to us that I discovered a few months ago, that of all the treasures on earth, none can possibly compare to being baptized into Christ, to being part of his body, to being one of his brothers and sisters, to being an inheritor of eternal life, so that, you know, we just had, well, just a few weeks ago, had uh, a celebration of Halloween. And we understand that coming from, you know, the long mists of history. But in it is, there's theology in there. We, the children dress up in scary little costumes and go out in the dark, stay up late, and gorge on candy. And it's fun, but it's also a way of proclaiming our baptism proclaiming that we are not afraid of the devil. We are not afraid, as, as uh, we read in one of the old prayer books, of ghoulies and ghosties and long-leggedy beasties and things that go bump in the night. We are not afraid 
because we are baptized, because that our king has made us a royal priesthood to share in his glory. And I love that this harvest uh, imagery is coming through today with our, our version of thank giving thanks to God on this day, which is that we are collecting the pledges for our upcoming program year, the 2023 year. We are giving thanks to you for your generosity and collectively giving thanks to God for all of the many blessings that have been given to us in this life, not least of which is this church. And why? Why do we come week after week? Why do we love this place? Why do we stick together one, one another? Because we walk through this valley of the shadow of death together, but with our Lord by our side. And all things live and bloom and have their being and come to an end in this lifetime. And so I love this imagery in our opening hymn. For the Lord our God shall come, and he shall take his harvest home. And because you know, we open the hymn singing the raise the song of harvest home. And you imagine your home with a table set and family and a Thanksgiving turkey and all the trimmings and that sort of harvest home. But the Lord will come and take his harvest home. That is all of us, all who have gone before us, all who live. And we will go to that heavenly banquet, that heavenly Thanksgiving feast that never ends where we will forever sing the praises of God around his altar and around his throne. And how fitting then today that we include in this celebration a baptism where we make a new Christian. And not only that, but all of us who have been baptized already are reminded of our baptism. We're reminded of uh, the vows that we made or that were made on our behalf. And we recommit ourselves to our covenant of serving God, of breaking bread, of remembering our prayers, of remembering to care for one another, and knowing that this gift, this great gift, is ours. Not because we deserved it, but because, as we read in Jeremiah, the sheep were scattered. And God sent his shepherd to bring back the remnant from wherever they are all over the world so that there will be one flock and one shepherd. And so as we begin this ceremony of baptism, I say to our baptizand, little Charles, a quotation from St. Paul that we heard earlier today. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 